question that often comes up when we're talking about bipolar disorder is, like, what's the evolutionary advantage or the evolutionary secret of bipolar disorder? And I think this is a great question. I'm going to talk about the evolutionary advantages, plural, or secrets, because I think there's, there's a couple ways to think about this. The first would be using the lens of circadian rhythms. This, of course, is something that is really important to bipolar disorder. We think that disruptions in circadian rhythms are probably part of what contributes to the onset of bipolar disorders. And also, disruptions in circadian rhythms are, are ways to understand some of the symptoms that people experience living with bipolar disorder. So that means like changes in things like sleep and energy and mood and appetite. All those things are under what we call circadian control. These are systems in our brain that follow an approximately 24-hour rhythm, and they're biologically encoded in, in parts of our brain, and they help to, to keep us on sort of a regular schedule. The interesting thing is this is is something that's found across all living beings, not just beings, right? So humans, mammals, all, all the animals, but also like in plants, we see it, right? So this, this is something that's evolutionarily conserved. And one of the interesting things about bipolar disorder is the circadian system is more vulnerable, more easily gets off track. And so what does that tell us about a potential evolutionary advantage of bipolar disorder? And I think the way to think about this is to think about other species that have similarly less robust or maybe more flexible circadian clocks. Examples that come to mind would be the Arctic fox. So as its name suggests, the Arctic fox lives in the Arctic, where it's really hard to find enough food to survive. And one of the features of the circadian system of, of, of Arctic foxes, foxes, fox, Arctic fox, is that they are able to be f flexible about when they're active, when they're hunting for prey, when they're looking for food, because there's so little of it available that they have to be able to get up and go whenever there is sort of a hint that food might be available. So rather than being tied to a specific, you know, night dark cycle, which is often what a circadian system does, it's it's a very flexible system in circadian foxes, enabling them to get it's n enough food so that they can survive. So there's an evolutionary advantage there to a more flexible or less rigid circadian system. S similarly, in migrating birds, they're traveling across great distances you know, from a human framework, this would be, you know, multiple time zones. Birds probably aren't thinking about that, but it does mean that they're going into different zones of light and darkness when they've got prey that's, you know, insects that are active at different times. And having a more flexible circadian system allows them to move across these large distances and adapt flexibly to whatever environment they're in. So a flexible circadian system enables beings to optimize their interaction with maybe a less predictable environment. And so our ancestors, our evolutionary ancestors, hunters and gatherers, probably did well when their circadian systems were more flexible, allowing them to pursue prey in, at different times in different contexts or to search out food sources even when it didn't sort of neatly follow the, the, the circadian system that, you know, that, that we think of today, sort of the, the days and nights. And so this kind of circadian rhythmicity that we see in bipolar disorder probably had an evolutionary advantage for our ancestors. It becomes a little more problematic today in the modern world when we're kind of locked into wake up times, sleep times, jobs that start at a certain time, school that starts at a certain time. You know, we're we're really bound by the external clock that that makes us be more rigid. So so people can run into some problems with that. But but from an evolutionary standpoint, you can see where having a more flexible circadian system might have conferred an evolutionary advantage. The other thing that I think is really talked about maybe more often is that bipolar disorder 
can give people kind of a creative edge. So we know that people living with bipolar disorder are disproportionately represented among artists, musicians, CEOs. So having the bipolar biology, bipolar temperament is associated with more creativity, increased risk risk taking, and for some folks, greater success. So we know, you know, uh, lots of people, historical figures who probably had bipolar disorder. There's so many of them, but, you know, Virginia Woolf, Beethoven, Ernest Hemingway, these are just a few people who come to mind. And and contemporary people who have self-identified with bipolar disorder, like Selena Gomez or Amy Winehouse. We believe Kurt Cobain probably had bipolar disorder. I think that's been documented. So, so there's just a, a disproportionate representation of bipolar disorder among creatives and creativity abounds in individuals with bipolar disorder. So this might be yet another way to think about one of the several evolutionary advantages of bipolar disorder.